God bless you. Good morning. Get woke. Ladies and gentlemen, MIP is COVID free. Free meaning you don't need a subscription to hear MIP every day now for a limited time. While we endure this pandemic, we want to make it available to everyone. So wherever you get your podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Pandora, MIP is COVID free and available to you and everyone without a subscription. Very challenging weekend to lose C.T. Vivian and John Lewis in less than 24 hours. Jesus shed blood for the sins of the world. C.T. Vivian and John Lewis shed blood for the sins of America. February 16, 1965, C.T. Vivian beat March 7, 1965, John Lewis beat. All over our social media, we've shared the interview I did with John Lewis on 2019. Our last interview together as we walked across the bridge. Little did I know that that would be the last one. But in 2006, we did it the first time. And as the march left Brown Chapel, John Lewis described what happened from Brown Chapel across the bridge every step of the way. I'll never forget it. That was in 2006. Um, And that was, I guess that would have been the 41st anniversary of the march. You know, Selma Bridge Crossing Jubilee is the only annual event in civil rights history that's commemorated. And so on 2006, I mic'd up John Lewis and me and every step of the way he described what happened. And so you hear the actual march in 2006 as it happened, you'll hear um, in, in cameo, Martin Luther King III, he's, you hear his voice and you hear some of the other proceedings and the SNCC Freedom Singers. So what you will hear on the podcast today is the raw audio of John Lewis describing everything that happened, every step on the march from Selma to Montgomery, the first one, Bloody Sunday, on March 7th, 1965. Amen. How, how old were you in 1965? In 1965, I was 21 years old. Had all of my hair and I was a few pounds lighter. <laughs> and, we, and we were walking in twos. Right. And it was a very, it was almost complete silence. So from the moment you all stepped off, it was quiet. It, it was so away. quiet, so quiet, no one saying a word. Until we got to the edge of the bridge, crossing the river, Jose asked me, saw this water down below, he said, John, can you swim? And I said, no. And uh, I said, Jose, can you swim? And I think he said no. I said, well, we're not going to jump. We're not going back. We're going forward. And we continued to walk. Mm -hmm. And I was wearing a backpack. I thought we were going to be arrested and that we were going to go to jail. So in this backpack, I had two books. I wanted to have something to read. I had an apple and an orange. wanted to have something to eat. Since I thought we were going to be in jail, uh, I had toothpaste and toothbrush to be able to brush my teeth. Now... SNCC really organized that march, right? Yeah, well, SNCC was here. SNCC came here in 1962. And there was some controversy about some of the SNCC people out of the Atlanta office didn't want to march, but the local SNCC people wanted to march. And the local people wanted to march. And I had been here off and on, getting arrested, going to jail. I wanted to march. So on Bloody Sunday, it was a combination of the local SCLC staff and the the Snicker staff and the local people really and it was not just from Selma but they were from the surrounding counties Mm -hmm. like uh, Perry County, Marion and but mostly from Selma. Mm. 
So this is the same route you took. You oh, want to step same. out from the oh, church? Oh yeah, oh yeah. And that was in the afternoon. In the afternoon, about this time, about this time of day. First Sunday in March. See, the night before, on March 6th, people tend to forget, Sheriff Clark, who was a sheriff, requested that all white men over the age of 21 to come down to the courthouse that Saturday night and be deputized to become part of his posse to stop the march. So, we didn't, we saw very little, uh, there was no police officials, nobody. But it was so orderly, so quiet, so peaceful. A little fast. Yeah, yeah we, need, we need to stay fast. So he had everybody deputized. He had all had, we, white, white guys uh -huh. in, in their khakis, um, khaki pants, khaki shirts. So when we got on to the, uh, the street that leads across the bridge, right on the corner near the Voting Rights Museum, we saw a, a pocket of uh, white men. Some of them had on coveralls and jeans, and they were giving us the finger and that type of thing. Um, but for the most part, pretty quiet. Okay. And then we got to the top of the bridge. Down below, we saw the sea of blue. Alabama state troopers, all in blue uniform. And behind the state troopers was the sheriff posse on horseback. And we continued to walk. No one saying a word. And we came within hearing distance of the state troopers. And this major identified himself and said, I'm Major John Cloud of the Alabama State Trooper. This is an unlawful march and will not be allowed to continue. I give you three minutes to disperse and return to your church. And Jose said, Major, give us a moment to pray. And before we can pass word back for people to kneel and pray, he said, Troopers advance. And you, and you saw these men putting on their gas masks. And they came toward us, beating up with nightsticks, bull whips, tramping us with horses, and releasing the tear gas. I was hit in the head by a state trooper with a nightstick. And, uh, in, in the film, it looked like when they hit you first, it was like dominoes. Right. And people just start tramping over each other. The last thing I remember, I was just out on the ground, and I thought I was going to die. I thought I saw death. And I thought it was the Lions protest. And 41 years later, I don't recall how I made it back across the bridge, back through these streets, back to the church. But I do recall being back at the church on that Sunday afternoon. Uh, the church was full. Probably there were more than 2,000 people on the outside trying to get in to protest. People came from all over, all over the church. So, somebody at the church asked me to stand up and say something. They chased us all the way back. People on horses came all the way up to the church. So they, they, the horses followed you all the way back down here. Back to the church. But I don't know who someone carried me. I stood up and said something like, I don't understand it. I don't understand it. My President Johnson can send troops to Vietnam, but can I send troops to South Alabama to protect people who only desires to register and vote? The next thing I knew, I had been admitted to the Good Samaritan Hospital in Selma with 17 other people. Now, where we are now, at, at what point did you know what was waiting for you at the bridge? Was it, had anybody gone ahead and no, reported back to you? No. At this point, where we are now, you still didn't know we what didn't, you were walking no, into? No, no. Didn't have any idea. Didn't have any idea. Was it, How were you feeling like at this moment? Where we oh, I felt, I, I, I anxiety felt, or anything? No, when we were walking along here, I felt so good because we had conducted a nonviolent workshop. The people were prepared. Um, people had their bundles and their knapsacks, and uh, they were determined to walk from Selma to Montgomery. We had made plans where to stay, but we would go to a certain distance and hope for someone would pick us up and we'd come back into Selma. Then the next morning, we would pick up where we left off and continue to walk. And you had about 100 people that day, right? No, it was about 600. It was, oh, on Bloody Sunday, it was on Bloody Sunday, about 600 people. Mm -hmm. Mostly uh, mostly women 
and uh, a lot of young people, a few men. Um, the people were very determined. They were brave and courageous folks. Ms. Gordon told me how, how they actually shot the canisters at her point blank range. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. demonstration in Selma, going back 63, 64, um, people have been arrested and jailed at the uh, Lunch County been a drugstore, people have been beaten at the courthouse, so the combination of things just all came together. Dr. King had been arrested here, uh, a lot of the ministers, school teachers, school children, it all came together when Jimmy Lee Jackson was shot and killed in Marion. That the original idea was that we would take Jimmy Lee Jackson's body from Marion to Montgomery. And then we dropped that idea and that we were more. Mm. So what happened to that? He said that to that. Right, we had his funeral in Marion. Okay. And Dr. King delivered a eulogy. And, uh, and we decided to have a march. Now, were you chairman of SNCC? I was chairman of yeah, yeah. By 65, I've been chair for two, almost two years by then. Where was, where was Dr. King on that particular day? He wasn't expected to be here? No. He was in Atlanta delivering a uh, sermon Sunday morning. And Reverend Abernathy was at his church in uh, in Atlanta, and he heard about what happened. And uh, the next day, he came to Selma, and early Monday morning, Dr. King and Reverend Abernathy came by my hospital room and, and to visit me. They were the only two people they were allowed to see me. And uh, Dr. King said something like, don't worry, John, uh, we'll make it from Selma to Montgomery. And he told me that he had made a request for religious leaders to come to Selma. The next day, so on Tuesday, March 9th, more than a thousand priests, rabbis, ministers, and non came to sun. And they marched to where we had been beaten two days earlier. Mm. And then they had a prayer and a song. And they turned back. And on that Tuesday night, four young ministers came down to the restaurant right down here, try to get something to eat. They were able to get a meal in that evening on that way, walking back toward Brown Chapel. Clan people jumped in and they beat one of the ministers, Reverend James Reed, so severely. He was hospitalized in Birmingham and died the next day. So you never got a chance to meet him, did you? No. Uh-huh. Were you still in the hospital then? Uh huh. I didn't march on March 9th. I was hospitalized. I got out that evening to march over. So here was somebody who had come to support you. Uh-huh. You didn't even get a chance to meet before they killed him. No. Was anybody coming out looking at you? Or no, it was so it was so quiet. The only I'll show you. The only it was just so orderly, so quiet. It, it was like military discipline. It was just this line of 600 people walking into. The young lady over there taking that picture, uh-huh. Martin, the young lady taking that picture, the black is, is she is, she's uh, Frederick Douglass's great, great, great granddaughter. My so Lord. She's, she's his, it must be his, his, yeah, his daughter, right. Okay. Right, right, right. Okay. Yeah, that's his daughter. Melina, I was introducing you to them while you were taking a picture. Yeah, that's what she does. Yeah, that's what she does. She does documentaries and whatnot, so.
we, we went walking this fast. I'm sure. And, and, and it was a little, it was a little cooler. Forty-one years ago, it was a little cooler. We all had on top coats. Uh, uh, it was true about you. Uh -huh. It was true about you. Uh huh. And we, and we, and it was six hundred. Oh, and we stayed, and we stayed on the, we stayed on the sidewalk. We, we didn't violate any traffic. We said we would have walked this fast before. <laughs> Miss Lewis is still going like fast. You slow us down a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. How you doing, Brad? I'm doing fine. Right. And we just, 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 fast yeah, we just probably need to pace ourselves because there are some people in this line that are older than, than we were in <laughs> 41 years ago. But we're okay. If somebody had gone ahead and said to you, if folk waiting over there, where y'all at? Uh -huh. Would you have gone on anyway? Oh yeah. We, 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 oh yeah, we were ready. We were prepared to march, to walk all the way from Selma to Montgomery. So you all really prepared to die. Oh, we were prepared to die. And, uh, Many years later, I had a cover session with Governor Wallace, and I asked him why were the order given to stop us on the bridge. Uh -huh. And he said there were people waiting on the other side of the bridge to kill us. And I said, well, Governor, do you kill people to keep other people from killing them? <laughs> right, right. You know, you know, you know I, re I really believe this. If, um, if Dr. Kingdom had gone on on March night, I think they would have used every bit of force they had to beat them. Yeah, and if he had gone on and kept walking. Uh huh. Mm. And, and he didn't want to violate a court injunction. Yeah. And I supported his position that we went in the federal court and we got an order against the governor, the sheriff, uh, to keep them from interfering with the law. So then when we got that court order, Linda Johnson federalized the Alabama National Guard, called our part of the military. So when we left two weeks later, we had the backing of the United States government. Mm. Mm. How long did it take you take your head to recover? A little period of, I guess, about uh, two weeks. But I, I, I later marched all the way, and after the march was over, I went up to uh, Boston, uh, Massachusetts General, had a complete physical. Okay. You, you see the pink building, right? You see the orange-looking building? Right. That's where all of the guys would gather, all of the sort of white hootlum on that corner. And they, they were just there like a pocket of maybe 50 or 60 people. Uh -huh. The White Citizen Council had headquarters here. When you would come to Selma in 63, 64, there would be signs saying, the Klan rally is tonight at 7.30. Mm. So it was a tremendous amount of fear here. Mm. And I said to young people today, if nothing else, the fear is gone. People yeah. no longer afraid. Yeah. Your mother came with us. We're looking at it in my office. It's a huge photograph. And there were over 10,000 people walked across when we came back in 75. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. We can get a copy of it made. I see, brother, we were, we were on this side for the people. We were, we were on the sidewalk. We never got in the street. And you had a two by two on the sidewalk. Two by two on the sidewalk. It's a good turnout here. Beautiful nature. So at this.
this point, you still didn't see anybody no, on the other side. We, we, just, we, we just saw this, this football. It was so, I'm telling you, it was so quiet. It's good to see that's going to be one of the interpret centers there. Okay. That's good. So the park said. Uh huh. So we still, so we still don't know what we're facing when we get no, up here. I have no idea. See, I think it's nothing else. It's so important to come back here. Yeah. Especially for young people yeah. to know this little piece of history. I come in here, man, every get a shot in the arm, man. Uh, yeah, I do too. I do too. And you know what I've told people? That, you know, when you go to Africa, you go to right. the slave camps, right. uh -huh. to the door of no return. Right, right. You get the same That's right. feeling you get when you come up on this bridge. It's well, just something about it. You know, not necessary for this, but I come across here on my way to G's being Alabama, but you'll see the women that make the quilt. And we came across this bridge. And I tell you, it just, there's something about it each time you come. Have you ever gone down to the courthouse here? Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But that was that was, that was a symbol. You know? The courthouse today, those steps look the same way today as they did uh, 41 years ago. Yeah. What they call? Yeah. Oh, Mark. Yeah. How you doing, darling? I'm doing fine. It's good to see this trend, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Let's see all the young people. We're standing at the foot of Edmund Pettus Bridge. In Chicago. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You, you see the, the seven time churner? Mm -hmm. It was so, it was, it was so vicious back then. And, all of us but it's a change today. paper now. And especially the many great warriors who opened the door so that we all could have the right to vote. Congressman John Lewis and so many others who came here on that very tragic day. But because they stood up, Chestnut Grove. How you doing, brother? Yeah. All right. Good to see you. You doing well? Yeah, you? I'm doing fine. But it's Good very important brother. that we protect and preserve this right as we get the Voting Rights Act renewed, and particularly Section 5, the free clearance section. That's right. Let me also thank Senator Hank and Attorney Rose Sanders and all of the persons that are responsible for ensuring that every year we would come back and designate this track because it is said that a people that do not remember their history are in fact doomed to repeat the mistakes of the past. Amen. And so we come not just to remember our history, but to also reenact a new part of history. During that one day we will have the right, all of us, yes. all people, yes. will have the unquestionable right to vote um, with no restrictions whatsoever. Let me finally say that I want to thank, and I, I come with mixed emotions today because my heart is heavy, having just lost a parent. And any of us who've lost a loved one understand how it takes time to grieve when you lose a loved one. But last year, I came with my mom for the last time, Coretta Scott King, and although she was not feeling well, we did ride over. That was the first time 
that she had written over in all the years that she came, but we rode over last year. And so this year, as I walk over in her honor, because we know that she's in a better place. Amen. We know that she now is actually with my father. Amen. And so she's certainly in a better place. But I will always remember the last ride that we took and walk over the day in dedication to her. And I thank Rose Saunders and Jubilee and, and everyone for this opportunity to say thank you to Coretta Scott King. Thank you and God bless you. Single person on the side when everybody was in line. In everybody was in line. You are Nobody was talking. No one was talking. Everybody was in line. Can you do that in all of Coretta? All of you were on the it was, side. It was like military day. discipline. And every now and then you saw reporter, so very few, camera crew, yeah. and maybe an FBI agent taking pictures. Mm. Mm. That's one. Yeah, when they were getting ready to beat us, they were just shoot. They're just shooting. Get in line, get in back, back here. On the side over here, we need you to move over to the side so we can clear the road. Yes, sir. Good job, sir. Keep on the side. Want to clear the road. Watch the front line go fast. You know I think it's a now at some point when you got up here you stopped oh yeah someone okay oh yeah oh, when, when we get up about where that white car is, uh -huh. you you can you saw it on the other side. You soak up is down below. You know, walking in twos, and, and we had people not everybody went that young, and uh, it was just a leisure, slow but deliberate walk. Mm. We didn't have a single sign. Just our body. And it was a it was a breeze blowing. I had on a light trench coat. And I looked down and I saw it just waving in the wind. Mm. It was so Thank you. Be careful here, brother. Okay. Shift to the right a little bit. Sunny day. It was so overcast. Probably more of an overcast than it is today.
people and let the sun shine upon us. Let it shine out of us now and give us a wonderful day. Help us to leave here fired up, ready to make a brand new world where all men, women, boys and girls will not be judged by the color of their skin, but the contents of their character. Oh, Lord, have mercy upon us today. Give us, I pray, the blessings that we ask. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right. How you doing, young man? How you doing, brother? How you doing, Renee? How you doing? I don't know you. Good to see you. Good to see you. I'll take my picture. One at a time. One at a time. It's a paper camera. With the one and all the I can get two. Like two. Okay, two for one, Shadow. Okay, wait a minute. I'm going to take my shade off. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm sorry, brother. Uh, I'm sorry. Good job. Get, get position there for these shots, folks. Be careful, brother. Don't trip on that thing. Yeah, I got you. Okay. You know, I just respect everything that you guys did. I'm on the SELC um, Civil Rights Tour, and it's uh -huh. been such. Really? I am so full. So I'm about to you, cry. You went to so Birmingham full. and to yes, Marion. Mm -hmm. I'm like from? so full. Detroit. I came from Detroit. Oh, I have so many relatives in Detroit. Really? I have two brothers there, sister there, niece and nephews, a lot of first cousins. But they all left Alabama and they're going to work in the automobile industry. Well, you know what? I'm going to send you something. I write for the community paper this year. Okay. paper to the Michigan Chronicles. Oh, I'm yeah. going to write about this experience. Oh, good. And I'm going to take my copy. Okay. Yeah, the most paper was very supportive. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I, absolutely. I know the history of that. Oh, yeah. There was a lot of support that came out of Michigan with the African American churches, but also UAW. Right. You know, Walter Ruth and those guys. Because you know we're fighting that measure now that we're trying to get the affirmative action. I'm right. Right. Come on, get on the ground. On this get side. Just walk in front of me like you were. Walk you in front right. of me. Walk in front of me. You'll be fine. Walk right in front of me. You're fine. Just walk up a little bit. You got no room, baby. Don't cry. <laughs> Just go. Don't hurt yourself. We're going to shift to the right a little bit. Martin, shift to the right just a little bit. If you can. Okay, we fine. Okay, darling. Okay. Amen. See, if, if we didn't have the people in front of us, we could still see him. Uh -huh. So about this point, you knew. Oh yeah. Now are you at Acre City, the state trooper cars? All lined up. They were all the way across the. They were all the way across the road. It was like a barricade of human figures. Now, are we at the point here where they stopped you? Oh no, no. Uh, okay. It was on the other, on the other side. Uh, at, at the foot. And if you look at some of those old photographs, there was a uh, hamburger stand, but they were selling hamburger for 15 cents. Really? Mm -hmm. 
all on, all on the right side. And by beating us and giving us two weeks later, we had time to have all type of support. And when Dr. King sent out that effort, we had an ad in the New York Times, there's all type of support came from all around the country and around the world. There was a guy in Atlanta, who was the guy that owned the, uh, the rental place? Uh, Aaron Rent. Oh, Aaron, okay. Yeah, yeah. They, made, they made tents available. Uh huh. Lot of milk. Lot of milk. Child lot of milk. They made these tents available, and then people like A.J. Gaston in Birmingham, and black people who own. Uh, yeah, he made. We were for for a little. I'm talking about very. You know, we had to pay him something, but it was reasonable. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Uh huh. You you see for the you see for the car flashing yeah. right in there, right on the other side. You see that sign. We we got to that point. You see the sign in the middle of the. Right, right. We got, we got to that. So you made it that far. Uh huh. And it, it, it beat people all the way back from that point, all the way back to, to the, the church. church. Oh, so had to run uphill to get. Oh yeah, there. oh yeah. And you saw bodies, people just rolling, really. And that was, and the only, only one little hospital, the little black Catholic hospital, would take people. That was uh, Good Samaritan, Good Samaritan. Now, you fell right there by that sign. Uh huh. And, and I don't recall how I made it back. Like, like, that's what Miss Boyd said. She said she doesn't remember. She remembers waking up. She said she remembers him standing over her. Mm -hmm. And the guy had the, the, the canister gun. Mm -hmm. And he walked right up on her. And she saw he was going to shoot her with it. Mm -hmm. he just, they shot two of them in her back. Mm -hmm. when, when, I, when I see film footage of what happened, it, it, even see myself falling down, it's hard for me to believe that it really did happen. And what, how, what was so mean about these people to do something like this to their fellow citizens, to their fellow human beings? And we were on it, we were exercising our constitutional rights. Mm. It's good to see that sign up there. Mm -hmm. I don't think that sign was there last year. So they named the highway after Dr. Reese. Uh huh. Oh, that's beautiful. Uh -huh. Hi, look, Jesse. I'm too short. I'm too short. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
God, you are our refuge. Send our ancestors to guard our doors. Cast out this virus from our communities and our bodies. Heal, bless, and protect everyone listening and their loved ones. 
Thank you for listening to Make It Plain and Get Woke. Remember to listen, like, and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and wherever you get your podcasts. If all minds are clear, it has been Made Plain.